This is my last poem. It's a poem about poetry. Uh, uh, discusses the nature of poetry. Ooh, life gets all serious at last. Uh, there's been a recent spat between two poets, both of them coming into, the po into poetry from different directions. One is Rebecca Watts, a dedicated, um, yeah, dedicated poet at Cambridge, and oh, she mastered at Oxford University, what you might call a traditional poet. The other, Holly McNish, <coughs> Turns out was also an Oxford graduate, but came into poetry as she, but she became a mother before falling into poetry through circumstance. She writes about issues such as breastfeeding in public, gender stereotyping of children. She has a huge following on social media, and this obviously piqued the interest of publishers. Holly gets a publishing deal, Rebecca won't review the book. I've read both poets' work. Both great poets. I, I like both of the, the writing. I'm, I'm trying not to take sides, but when Rebecca Watts said, Poetry is a wonderfully therapeutic thing to do at amateur level, but amateur artists and musicians don't think they should exhibit at the Tate or play at the Wigmore. Serious poets, I should say, don't start off amateurs, but apprentices, just like any other vocation, which I found to be really patronising. Uh, found this other quote from an American poet called Lucille Clifton. I've not read any of her stuff, but she said, I think we're beginning to remember that the first poets didn't come out of a classroom. The poetry began when somebody walked off a savannah or out of a cave and looked up at the sky with wonder and said, oh, that was the first poem. Mm. So this is my two penneth on what it takes to be a poet. It's called I'm Not a Proper Poet, Me. <clears throat> I'm not a proper poet, me, or back when Adam delved and Eve spun, who then was Sir John Betjeman? I'm not a proper poet, me, I drop me H's frequently. Yes, Pam Ayres seems to do all right, but imagine the outraged cries of the non plus literati if she took the Pulitzer Prize. My lingua franca, to be frank, seems at odds with a polished tongue. An RP speaker might assume my mum and dad had got it wrong. Larkin might blame my parents. See, I'm not a proper poet, me. I'm not a proper poet, me. Enunciation is the key. I bastardise the spoken word to perpetuate my vision, making use of the ellipsis and especially elision. My modern English usage will make old Fowler spin in his grave, thus leaving me made out to be a poor, poetry, poultry knave. Whatever critical thinking is placed upon this masterpiece, I know it won't be long before I'm nicked by the grammar police. They want me under lock and key. I'm not a proper poet, me. I'm not a proper poet, me. Life interrupted poetry. But life has given so much more, it brought uncertainty and fear, along with much love and laughter, but little income in each year, working hard and then hoping for easy terms on a frigid air. It must be nice composing verse in the rarefied Oxbridge air, writing in the sheltered housing of a desk in some campus space, six hours a week of tutoring, then back to the Tassimo face. It's not Kate Tempest's urban rage or Wilfred Owen's pointless war sustained by Bourbon biscuits and the single malt in the drawer. <coughs> Condescending cognoscente. Forget you can write from the heart. Sometimes you have to live some life for it's time to make a start. You betcha man that betcherman managed fine without his degree. The first poetry superstar and a regular on TV. Not the right university. I'm not a proper poet, me. I'm not a proper poet, me, born of the pistol's anarchy. A jazz maestro cries in anguish while pulling on his goatee chin on hearing those first strident chords. Rock and roll lacks the discipline. And remember punk was poo-pooed by prog rockers back in the day. One chord <laughs> wonders playing the part and singing about anarchy. They wish them all an early death. But punks climbed out of the rubble, persevered with their instruments, had success without much trouble. I still like Yes and ELP. 
I'm not a proper poet. Me. I'm not a proper poet. Me, my publisher is me. You see, mm -hmm. I've no chance to be poster boy at either Faber or Faber, less at Virago. No matter how much I rattle my saber. So when the literary world is rocked by Holly come lately, picks up a deal with Picador, the reactions matter greatly. Seen as the denigration of intellectual engagement, put another way, dumbing down, disguising certain resentment, the green eye of the yelling god is crying it's unmerited to throw money at arrivistes and leavers disinherited. And some of it might not be great, some of it certainly is. Trust the eyes of the beholder who are the ones that fund the biz. If you just wanted to be admired for your cleverness and skill, then go out and buy a mirror and find a host of daffodils. There's poetry and poetry. I'm not a proper poet, me. I'm not a proper poet, me. I stand up for equality. Let's hear it for the spoken word, a fanfare for the common man. A way to progress their writing, perhaps the only way they can. With parent-funded internships creating the social impasse, yet another means to muffle the voices of the working class. If this embryonic poet brings new readers to the table, she may inspire others to write in the best way they are able. When it all gets too complacent and in need of a seismic shift to open closed shops up and stop a new voice from being cast adrift, you've got to see the big picture. And if it's not your poetry that these people are reading now, then in time it surely will be. For now, take some kind of comfort that a stigma has been removed. People want to be entertained. People also want to be moved. After the Manchester bombing, this is the place, sugared the pill. Tony Walsh, Longfellow, moved me more than Longfellow ever will. It's just a work of honeybee. I'm not a proper poet, me. I'm not a proper poet, me. It's all good fun, I guarantee. Don't be put off on the say-so of some academia nuts. See what I did there? Yeah, you did. May I tell you that? May I say that line took guts? That's the point I'm trying to make, is be brave and not just clever. Believe you can be a poet with courage and some endeavour. Buy a rhyming dictionary. Be surprised at where you're taken. Say what you see like on catchphrase. Stand up for the point you're making. If you can reach out to people who think they don't like poetry, see it as nothing more than a bowl of verbal potpourri, if elitists lead you a dance by calling it terpsichore, be like Lowry, as smart as paint, and stick with your match stickery. Love John Cooper Clark's midnight shift as much as John Donne's break of day. The world is full of new readers who all bought fifty shades of grey. Which brings it back to me again. The ageing arthritic rapper whose hip-hop's on the NHS and drug of choice is a cuppa. Collaborating with Jay-Z. I'm not a proper poet, me. I'm not a proper poet, me, never taken seriously. You see, I'm a punchline poet. My poetry plays like a joke. It drips with flipping flippancy. It's annoying to certain folk. I'm a poet with a purpose, and it's not just to make you laugh, like French statesman Jean-Paul Marat. Yeah, no. I write most of it in the bath. If poetry moves you to tears, then why not move you to laughter? I might not win the Nobel Prize. I'll settle for a BAFTA. I'm not in it for the money. I'm happy with any acclaim. The only thing I ask of you is that you remember my name. Grey Lightfoot, first bus employee. I'm not a proper poet, me. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for coming.